call this January 9th, 2023 meeting of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board to order. Can we please start the roll call? Aaron Angel. Here. Scott Conlon. Here. Thomas Davis. Here. Paige Lewis. Here. Sam Libby. Here. Nicholas Novello. Here. Dan Olson. Here. And Council Liaison Tim Waters. Here. Well, our first order of business is to welcome our new members. So, Tom and Sam, it would be great if you could just briefly introduce yourself yeah. and tell us a little bit about your interest in this board. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll be honest, joining the board, I'm much more interested in just getting behind something that's already actively working before showing up with any sort of dumb ideas of my own. Um, yeah, and so I've been in Longmont now for about three and a half years, coming up on four. Uh, I've got three little kids, so Parks and Rec is intertwined with my life <laughs> indefinitely. And so, yeah, I'm just really excited to be here. Thank you for all for, for including them. So. Cool. Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. Um, Sam Libby, I've been here for a couple of years in Longmont, two and a half years in Seven and Boulder. Um, live just up the hill in Old Town. I'm really excited to be able to contribute and hear about all the things you guys are sharing here. Uh, I'm interested for a couple of reasons. Like Tom, I have little kids, so that my life is intertwined. <laughs> and definitely with parks, I like that, that phrasing. Um, <clears throat> I also serve on the Boulder County Planning Commission, and so I'm used to kind of their way of doing business, and this is a much more local to me since the county has no sway over Walmart. You know, this is a little more uh, close to home for me. And i um, really interested in what we can do to provide good feedback for the project. The, the what? Boulder County Commission? The Boulder County Planning Commission. Planning, thank yeah. you. So I think it'd be good if we could each just maybe quickly introduce <coughs> ourselves. Nick, if you want to start just who you are and how long you've been on the board and Sure. Why. And why, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Nick, I've been on the board, this will be year three, right? Wow, that flew by. Uh, holy cow. Um, I am on this board because I, uh, like many of you, love Longmont, and I love our parks and recreation system, amongst other services that our, our city provides. Uh, and I want to do my part to contribute towards it, and I want to you know, build the future of our community. So that's me. Great. Erin? I'm Erin Angel, and I am pretty new to the board. I just joined this year, and I joined the board to uh, kind of represent a lot of the people I work with, which are people of color and um, some marginalized people, and also to represent some of the things that don't have a voice, like the animals and the plants and things like that. Okay. Scott? Um, Scott Conlon, um, I live in Old Town as well. Uh, been in Long forever, I guess. Uh, I, I'm on a board of Bicycle Longmont, do a bunch of events in, in Longmont, so that's kind of what draws me um, to the board. Uh, I guess I've been here sometimes next so this is year three I think that's just it's crazy that's yeah, crazy I guess one year was really virtual <laughs> yeah. I'm Dan Olson um, I've been on this board this is my last year which means year six because you only get two three year terms is that right yeah mm -hmm. you're this is my last year <laughs> and uh, I joined because I'm like you I had little kids now they're grown and gone but we're heavy park and rec and pool and everything users. You look around and you'll see me. So, um, and so, like you guys, I wanted to give back. I tried to get on this board 25 years ago and they said, no thanks. So I showed up again. <laughs> so it's been great. Awesome, and I'm Paige Lewis. Uh, this is my starting my second year of my second term. Um, and I bet I was chair last year and this year, so I'm two years. Um, I've lived in Longmont since 2011, so it's been a while now. Mm -hmm. And just everything about this board really um, resonates with both my personal and professional interests. I work in the conservation field, and I'm also really committed to the importance of recreation and open spaces, both for people and for wildlife and nature. So um, it's really great to be part of this board, and I really enjoy being able to be part of this aspect of our community. So, great, welcome. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to introduce Scott? Tim. Tim Waters, I'm the liaison <coughs> for the city council. 
each board or commission has a council member of the liaisons to that board or commission. This is my second uh, term uh, or opportunity to liaison to this board. This is, this is maybe the best board to serve on as a liaison. Right? So this is a cherry job. <laughs> Everybody lobbies for it, and I got it. So. Awesome. What's the worst one? Yes. <laughs> You're being recorded. Oh, yeah. Ask me later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just, I just actually, kind of want to know so I don't actually, apply. Actually, the worst one is is actually what meets on Tuesday nights. But <laughs> 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 I'm Danielle Cassidy. I'm uh, the liaison for the Board of Trustees of Lake Michigan Natural Resource Project Manager in Parks and Natural Resources. And David Bell, Director of Parks and Natural Resources. And Jeff Friesner, I'm Director of Recreation, Libraries, and Museums. Is that official now? Yes. Congratulations! Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Good for all of us. What happened to Bob? It, it sh I shortened the name. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to get done tonight. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been on one business card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Sue Allen Dabney, Recreation Program Supervisor. Great. Steve? Oh, I'm Steve Renswell. I'm the Senior Project Manager of Parks and Natural Resources. Great. That's awesome. Thanks, everyone. Everyone and happy new year. I neglected to say that at the beginning. So uh, next we have the opportunity to elect a chair, and I will say I'm happy to continue serving. I'm also happy to pass the gavel on to somebody else. So if there is someone who is really interested, excited in serving as chair, uh, please let us know. We can do the nominations process. We'll also need a vice chair. Um, but I think just popping in and up and to care if there's someone else that is interested in serving. I'm interested in having you serve. You do such a great job that no one. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to nominate you because you're just an assistant of Ray Leader. I appreciate that. So, if you have that nomination, I second the nomination <laughs> of Paige Lewis as our, is that something we have to do? I second the nomination yeah. of Paige Lewis as our chair. All those in favor? Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really I appreciate the vote of confidence. I do enjoy this. And so we do also need a vice chair. Nick is our current vice chair. Um, I don't know if you're interested in continuing or if there's anyone else who is interested in serving as vice chair. I would love to continue, but I'll say I'm just curious if there's others. Good okay. by me. Yeah. Anyone? I'll second that. Is self-nomination? Do I self-nomination? <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a nomination. I'll nominate Nick Thank to you. serve as vice chair. And second? I'll second that. Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Great. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for your vote of confidence in Nick and I to continue <laughs> in our rules. So we will move on to approval of the agenda. Do you have a change? Yeah, I'd like to. It can involve football. No, <laughs> but it is about priorities because the meeting may have the potential to go long tonight. So I'd like to propose that we do old business A, then new business A and B to make sure we cover those three items this evening. Okay, we'll just get that down. But you'll remember. Yep. Okay. Any opposed? Uh, any other proposed changes to the agenda? Don't we need to do new business C, D, E, and F early on? Yeah. It, not as much as, as these bigger items, because okay. we, we can, though, well, we should fly through those. I agree, but I thought we used to do those like right off the bat. Nope, usually okay. they're under new business. Okay, fine. Okay. Great. Any other proposed changes to the agenda? Any nominations? Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, old business A and then new business A and B first. Great. Can we get a second? I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Great. 
Okay, now we will move to approval of the previous month's minutes, which I don't know if you guys tried to get a chance to read through. Yes. Um, does anyone have any edits or changes <coughs> to the minutes from last I was impressed that you got all that in there. So what nice thing I figured out who got which points and which names. That was impressive. And I couldn't tell you that you got anything wrong. So. <laughs> okay. If there are no changes, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Sure. I'll move that we approve the minutes as written from last month. Great. Can I have a second? A second. All in favor? Great. Are approved. Uh, now we'll move to public invited to be heard. I don't have the list, so if you would. Seems to be just me. Okay. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Ben McKinney. I live here in town. Uh, I was lurking in the back two months ago, just observing and listening. Um, I'm here because I have an interest in possibly being on the board at some point in the future. Um, I think I just have sort of two questions. At the November meeting, there was talk about I think, two new people and then possibly doing, or there's still an open seat. I was just curious if, if you had a vision for the seats, just so I can mentally think through what the commission or, or the board is doing. Um, if you're able to share any of that. Yeah, Great. I know that yeah. both seats were filled, so there's, there won't be an open seat until the next cycle. Okay, so they are all full. Yeah. Okay. And, and that means. So until uh, next January. Next January. Yeah. Okay. The process will December, occur in, right. in the late part of the year with appointment is starting in January. Got it. Okay. The notice comes out when, Jeff? October ish? Yeah, early Mid October, or maybe even late September. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And then um, for the. What is this commission's role with regard to the city manager, you know, the potential tax? Um, or mill levy increase, you know, for 2023. How does this commission have an active role or a passive role? That's to be determined okay. yet. Um, I, I think we're waiting from for direction from the city manager and, and leadership, and to be determined uh, what the board's role will be after that. Okay. Which I'm hoping it comes soon. Yeah. Okay. It's an area. Of Yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Anything else? No. Nope. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so now we will move to old business A. Yep. And I'll just, um, just a quick reminder, and especially for folks that are new, if you could please, if you have a question or want to make a comment, just raise your hand. Just it helps you to kind of manage uh, and make sure everyone has a chance to talk. So. Do you guys want to do like a staff presentation first, and then questions, or do you want us to just like talk throughout? It's pretty. We generally, um, so old business. This is kind of the format of our agenda, and we go through um, old business, which is follow up from things that we've discussed previously, and usually it's the staff will present an update or discussion item, and then we open kind of Q and A. Okay. Um, and then we go to new business, which is uh, things that are new that we haven't discussed before. Again, and then, usually a staff presentation. Again, usually a staff presentation. And then number eight, items from the packet updates is where it's just kind of an open, if you have questions about written briefings yep. in the packet. And then items from staff are things that were not included in the packet that staff want to share. And then items from the board is just open questions from Thanks. Sorry, I should have gone through that. Okay. okay, item eight, Boco Open Space and Trails Grant. Is that you, Danielle? Yeah. Uh, you? It's Danielle. I was going to say, Danielle, I just want to give her a little credit for helping me out. So ever since Dan Wolfer retired, um, well, a couple of things. Since Danielle, um, Dan retired and Kathy has moved on, um, Steve and staff have been doing a lot of extra work, and Danielle has been really helping out with the open space portion that Dan Wolfer would have been working on in the past. So, Danielle's going to do this piece here as far as our work with Boulder County and how we partner with them on properties. And the mapping of both, though, I think it's a good opportunity to come later in the meeting. But um, on the 29th of December, this parcel right here is Adam Dairy. 
we finally closed on that. So we, you start seeing as Daniel talks about this, how this is all going to start fitting together in our conversation. So um, with that, I'll turn over to Danielle and talk about what we'll be um, working for the county on coming up. Yeah, okay, so um, what we're talking about is um, annual acquisition planning, uh, open space acquisition planning for the city of Longmont. And every year around February, with the exception of last year, because pandemic related, so we haven't, we haven't um, submitted anything to Boulder County since 2020, we've had a gap. Typically every year, if we have anything that we would like to partner with them on, they put out an application and, and, and all the municipalities around Longmont, Louisville, Superior, Erie, um, put in an application and say, these are the items that we're thinking about and, and these are the ones that you know we're asking for a partnership on. And so we did that, we in 2020, um, in 2020, we asked for Adam Derry, and we got a significant um, contribution from financial contribution from Boulder County to make that happen. And they're going to hold a CD over the parcel. Yeah, and that was two million dollars in Boulder County. And so, so we make, so we ask for open space uh, requests for partnership, and we ask for trail requests for partnership with Boulder County. Um, so we asked for the parcel east, oh, so that's Adam. We asked for the parcel east of Clover Basin Reservoir. So that is Down there. It's, it's in this area. Um, I, or it's in this area. And that, it's Dorfman. Is that purple? I don't know what the color is, but to the to the west there, that is open space acquisition. So the stuff you're seeing in that in that purple is, is open space. Open space and so and then the green is um, Boulder County land. So we had asked for that. And in 2020, Boulder County said they'd be willing to partner if an opportunity becomes feasible and funding is available. Um, we asked for Highland Ditch water rights. So that has to do with um, the Olander property, which is on the corner of 66 and 5. So, so right, so we have Double Six Ranch and Hartman here, and so this would be the Olander property, and so this is for sale from a private developer, um, but he sold off the water rights to Boulder County, so they hold the Highland Ditch water rights now. So this is a dryland property that is got potential for water rights, but right, built down by Boulder County, and this is for sale by a private developer. So that was on our priority list the last time we submitted. Dry Creek Greenway to Loggerman, I should have done that first. Uh, that's down in here again, right? Yep, so, yep, and that's... It's like going through here. Yeah, as Steve maybe is we're probably frustrating to whip that around, but Steve's working on some projects over in this area, the Dry Creek area, those develop. Um, Dry Creek Trail will come up in here, basically it will dead end over at 75th. We thought it would be a great opportunity to have some sort of underpass way to get over onto the AHI property, Blue Sky property, this county open space. If we were able to especially acquire something here, again, be able to come to here and have an opportunity for more of a passive recreation, wildlife viewing, it's, it's really kind of a low impact area that could tie all this together. So um, moving out to the to the west with our trail system, giving us opportunity to do the Blue Sky Trail, kind of that, and get up to the Clover Basin as well. And then we asked for water in the Clover Basin Reservoir. Yeah, which would be, again, if you came through here, you could do this, or you just come in and do the loop here. And so on all of these, Boulder County's answer was similar. Yes, we partner if, if funding is available and um, it, you know it's feasible at the time. And so when, when we looked at all of these, I think I got them all. Oh, Rocky Mountain Greenway Trail Master Planning. So regional trail planning, um, 
we are asking Boulder County to pick up and lead an effort that got set down uh, before the, after the flood. It was something that Boulder County had started leading regional trails, so it would be the piece coming from Lyons to um, Rocky Mountain, no, from Longmont to Lyons, and then the next piece would go Lyons to Rocky Mountain National Park. And so Boulder County, when the flood hit, had started listening sessions and was working with other partners in the area to, to work on this regional trail, Rocky Mountain Greenway Trail master planning. But then that got set aside and hasn't been picked up since the flood. So our request, one of our requests at that time is, could you pick this up, could you lead this, and can we partner with you finding grant dollars? And because of our, um, because it'll go past our button rock preserve property um, not through it but it will use the same access road likely so you know we would want to be part of that so those were our requests at the time and so when we sat down and started thinking about what would we want to request for this year um, well Olander which we looked at um, Um, we considered Olander, and as I explained, it has no water rights because Boulder County owns them, so they asked them what it would be to um, give us the water rights as opposed to contributing financially. And then we were thinking that we would maybe do a three-way partnership with water resources because this could be an expensive property and it could be helpful to them. But with, because of Union Reservoir expansion in the future, because then they could secure more land. But when we reached out to them, they said, um, you know, it's 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 outside the footprint, and because of their their non-interest in it and our interest in it being sort of low in terms of open space, because the water rights have been severed, we're kind of thinking that. We don't want to ask Boulder County to partner on this at this time. Like this is not going to be, this doesn't rank as a high priority right now. Um, and going through all the rest of these, these do seem like longer term on the five-year planning scale priorities, but in terms of what we want to partner with them on this year, considering that we just finished Adams, considering that they just gave us a $2 million contribution, the way we're thinking about it now is um, kind of instead of asking for anything this year, just telling them that we have things on the longer term horizon and that um, our program needs to refocus on management planning, um, which is something that we in natural resources, natural resources have been wanting to do for quite some years but really haven't had the staff. So the open spaces that we have, get management plans going for them and get that planning and programming in place. And then next year or the, the year beyond when, when something big and important comes along, then we can ask Boulder County at that time and we won't you know, kind of exhaust our favors by asking for something every year. Um, but also we wanted this to be a discussion. So um, I flew all over the place. So. Why don't we um, go around and go back to some of these things and have a conversation about, ask questions about anything that I presented. Great. Okay. Are there questions? Dan? So do I understand that we're going to ask for nothing or ask for the same things that we asked for before? We are thinking of asking for nothing because nothing is, nothing on this list Nothing on this list is going away, but nothing on this list is rising to the top of being a big ask. We really need a partnership right now, um, and because we just got done with Adam Derry, um, kind of just nothing, waiting. And does the land or water rights, is that a different program or overseer than trails? So you mentioned that under Nelson Road or the under 75th, but there's also the under the airport to go by the railroad tracks uh, to go up toward Westview Middle School. That's also with, and you haven't brought that up, but that's part of the trails ask or whatever. 
So I'm just wondering if these are, are we still continuing with the trails so kind of thing? Steve, Steve can talk a little bit too as far as going. Oh, right, I didn't, get to, I didn't talk about um, phase 12. Yeah, so maybe maybe ask, we, we haven't been asking for their uh, financial support because we already have that project funded. We would like to, our conversation with them is that we want to time that project for when they're building their projects from Pell Crossing okay. east to Airport Road. And we're all sort of in a holding pattern until they acquire the black property in 25? Five or six, I think, five. Mm -hmm. but anyway. So uh, that both those projects are somewhat on hold. So do we need to submit something, or that's a done deal? I mean, I'm just asking for you guys. You know, how do you make sure eyes are dotted, T's crossed, that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, that is not something you need to submit for this task. And, and I mean, I guess I'm I'm talking about two things because I want to talk about what our priorities are for City of Longmont in terms of acquisitions coming up. But specifically, what I was focusing on is what we would be asking Boulder County for on their application that's due, and that partnership. So it's it's almost it's almost two conversations. So that piece would fit outside of, you know, what we may put in an application. So not asking for anything for partnership with Boulder County is not to say that we're not going to continue to work on the acquisitions. Um, David's working on Longfellow this year, and we do have longer term things going on as well. I think maybe for your question as far as the open space and trails and water, it really is Boulder County Parks and Open Space really administers those dollars. Those really come in from a lot of the lottery dollars. A lot of places that gets divided up by communities, they used to be a little piece. Boulder County really brings that in and then they administer that those dollars and they work with the community to see where they can best leverage that. So um, if it's a greenway, that falls under our ballot language for our open space dollars. We can leverage that if it's an open space property or if it's water that can support those open space properties. We can we can use our dollars in partnership with Boulder County on that. So I think so. Those longer greenway expansions are things we're really you know hoping to work with them on, and then some of these pieces that kind of tie those together, protecting water and some of those high value areas. And again, I think at one point it was um, I remember Waters kind of asked you know. How, how we kind of decide what these pieces look like. If you go back to that bond language, and it really talks about the idea of, you know, shaping the urban buffer, creating those buffers and boundaries, preserving agricultural lands, preserving wildlife, preserving those special places. You really start seeing how our waterways start getting really well protected. These agricultural lands, we really kind of buffered to the east out there. So I, I think they really start forming what, I think you read that, read that original ballot language on what you want those open space dollars to do. Um, we really are achieving a lot of that. And then as far as the not asked this year, those those placeholders are still there. So I still think we have the same answers from Boulder County. Right. If we get a willing seller and that everything lines up, I think we have their answer on those properties. And those are still really our top priorities at this point. And but you don't have to re-ask yourself. Well, I was going to say, we, we have a contact that we, we work with, um, Tina Nielsen at Boulder County, for these applications. So... I'm going to check with her before the deadline and make sure she doesn't want just, does she want placeholders? That does would she want be my, what we're working exactly on? what my thought was. Kind of, you don't want it to just evaporate. Exactly. Oh, we didn't, you yeah. didn't mention, yeah, that kind of thing, yes. right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, if all of those projects come to the bargain sale price, and like, yeah, we need to make this happen, we will definitely be saying that we want to reach out and make sure that that's full kind of soul aware of that. Are there certain kinds of projects that you think are best suited for partnership with Boulder County? I would say having worked with Boulder County over the years, I think they, even though Adam Dairy was a big, uh, you know, a, a big partnership for them, they really um, like working with us over on that kind of western side to help create those buffers, working at Longmont to provide areas that, um, where it's not the county stepping in and saying, we want to prescribe how your, your community looks, but if there's opportunities there for doing some of that shaping on the, the western side, protecting any of those, um, Major waterways. St. Frank Creek is a great place to ask for them for help because if you start looking at from the purple there all the way up between the State Park, Longmont, Boulder County, and Lyons, we've done a great job protecting a lot of the St. Frank Creek. So I think if you think, look at places where it's protecting the creek, it's a good good ask. And again, I think that western side is probably always ones that compete very well. Yeah. Uh, that brings me to my next point, which was are we all set for Union Res? I see blank spaces around Union Reservoir, and it's going to expand, I understand it, someday. 
is the, I mean, I see gray or whatever color that is that's not, you know, either in Boulder County or City of Longmont. Is that an ask we should be thinking about or you have or? I would say um, we're set for now and that and Water Resources agrees with that, but the caveat to that would be that we haven't done the trail alignment planning piece of it um, since it was initially approved in the plan. So it could, if it changes, it shifts, there may be something that comes up in that process. But for now, nothing is rising to the top is really important um, that we need to, to do right now. I mean, your O-liner, yeah, you know, I would say diagonally left below looks more interesting. Yes, right. exactly, yes. you know, I mean. That's that's an area, and again, I think working, these are probably up in this kind of shaded area here, these open space properties and natural areas. I'm sure what that, that's, that's, the is. That, that's the reservoir company. Um, between that and these blue pieces here, there's there is some in this area probably <coughs> up on the north, and those those are coming down to a couple lots. And us again, we probably don't we don't like to throw those out there because it's going to be a willing buyer and a willing seller kind of over time. But I think Kent Houston and Water Resources feels like we're pretty close. If we had to expand right now, <coughs> we can get to those levels of rise that we need to. Okay. Any other questions? Maybe if I could throw one up, you know, you asked what Boulder County really is looking at. As you start looking at this map on kind of what the open space program has been able to accomplish over the years, are there things that this group would say should be our priorities? That's what else I'll yeah. also like to do is say, where are those pieces? Because some don't talk about those regional trails, you know, if you look at this going from um, Long Longmont to Lyons, there's probably a lot, a lot of property we want to buy out there, but partnering with Boulder County to make that happen is probably a great benefit for our community. I, I would like to see us protecting left hand as well. I mean, left hand looks sad and lonely <laughs> and like it not so well. So yeah, left hand gets a, a little harder, Steve. You've worked on left hand for a while. It, it's lived really a lot more hemmed in. Um, with current development and stuff. So I think it's one of the things that the city has done great. I, all those tools in the toolbox, we talk about our parks, our open space, and our greenways, and that dedication piece, and trying to preserve as much of that riparian habitat, or at least create those corridors, has been something the city's been, um, done a great job on. And I think in this last council, trying to get even greater setbacks on some of those has been a big piece. But it's not a whole lot of large properties to buy along left hand at this point. Is that, I mean, if you pull just a little bit this way because you know sophomore park's been in there in since the 60s so right. not much you can do you can't tear down my house yeah. <laughs> you're welcome to that's fine um but as you as you go we're like we're by orders of magnitude right now just get it developing that like it's huge like two summers ago the the news was that the bears kept walking back and forth in there and you're not gonna see that because now there are large scale housing, there's there's warehousing there, and there's all that. And that's just happening now. And right across where um, Olin is, like that's all being developed and you keep going down and that all is important. It's also indigenously important. That's all protected by Boulder County. It's all coming over the place line. Okay, does it's it all, separate. like as you get yeah. further it, yeah. it does? All the way okay. down to Iowa 19. Okay. They have control over. A lot of that is Boulder County. Another piece of this is that, going back to that, that ballot language and some of the, the work we do in the city, one of the pieces is that the open space program doesn't, if you look at those kind of shaping of the community around those outer peripheries, we really try not to get into buying properties within the community where our master plans and envision long mind is that these are the areas that were designed, that if we're gonna have growth in our community, we want growth to happen in those areas where there are utilities, where there's opportunities to do that. We don't want to expand beyond that. So. Um, we typically don't step into buying lots and pieces within the developer community. I just, I mean, just because it's there's utilities there doesn't mean it should be protected. Yeah, well, um, left hand creek's well protected, I think, upstream of diagonal, diagonal? Or, 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 okay, I'm yeah. sorry, of, I don't know, what is it? I know, 
Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Up to ninety fifth, and then downstream of Main Street, we we have we had a project and land acquisitions before that area developed, and so we were able to better protect the creek before the lows and all those houses and things arose. And you're right, Southmore Park was built, and a lot of the um, property testing happened between Pipe Road and. Um, 95th in the early uh, 90s, late 80s. And so we sort of lost the opportunity to, bar, to have a wider greenway than typical from there. Okay. Lessons learned, you know, if they ever redeveloped, we would certainly be asking for more greater protections. But as David alluded to, it's hard to go in and, and buy up a bunch of houses to keep down just for preservation of the existing creek that most people would say is going to function pretty well. Um, and the other, the one thing I can say is that gray area just downstream of, uh, of, of, of that is not city property; it's private property. But there's a drainage easement on it, which is why all that development to the north, the the, uh, the pod the place here. and the, yeah. the, the uh, for, uh, assisted living homes and things, that is all set back from the creek, partly because of the setbacks that we had instituted since we've learned our lesson, and so that's the reason why those are much further away from the creek than. Uh, and then they, some of the uh, older development along the creek in that corridor. I was going to say, I'm really interested in that um, the little lake area that's north of the Lagerman Agricultural. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, oh, Nelson. Oh, yeah. And I would like to see, I mean, because like, there's huge wildlife habitat here. There yes. are benefits yeah. in that area. Yeah. And I think there could be some. You know, low impact recreation, and so I definitely continuing to, I think, protect as much of that this is, as this is, possible would be of interest. Yeah. Well, this doesn't really show up, but this piece here that's kind of kind of falls into this, you know, private property. This is actually owned by the Clover Basin Reservoir Company, which I'm not quite sure. So this is is owned by the Clover um, Basin Reservoir Company, which the city is about a 99.9% .9 owner of. So we have the ability to utilize that property um, in a management way that kind of meets most of, most of the city's needs. Um, the police would be looking at be a place up in this area that again would really tie into that. It's a private mm -hmm. lot, again, the area you talked about, you know, um, it's not in our Longmont planning area, but it really is buying a pretty decent sized lot. They would really preserve that area. If you do want people to come into it, they won't be parking right up at that. And I think as staff has talked about it, we bring back these groups, it would be an opportunity for maybe some picnicking and wildlife viewing and some maybe portional hiking around it. But that western end has some great um, wildlife habitat and stuff. And I, I think one of the things that we always have to work with different members of the public on why would you buy open space, not just open it all up, it's closed open space. But there's opportunities to, I think, find some nice balances where people can get in there, they can utilize it, and also um, have places for the wildlife. It's not always doesn't always have to be active agriculture. Doesn't always have to be an active trail. I would just clarify that just because it's outside the Longmont planning planning area doesn't make it free range because Boulder County planning has some level of, of uh, expectations too as far as which lands we acquire, which lands we don't. So. I just want to make sure you understood that we don't, don't want to just go into Boulder County and poach wherever we can. Yeah, they're, they're pretty supportive of that one, though. They've yeah. already said that. But, no, I understand that. But just yeah. the, there is a process within the county that yeah. does what the city does as far as what land should develop, what land should. So I don't know if we're ready to close out this discussion, but the way this goes, and this is an annual thing when we talk about partnering with Boulder County and what would we want to put in our application. Whatever we say, whether it's we're not asking for anything or we're just summarizing where we're at, um, it's it's an approval by you. So I um, just want to make sure that everybody has gotten everything and no more questions about this. Have you ever not asked for anything before? We've always asked for something. You know, um, I don't really know, but I'm sure that that's... It makes yeah, it's taking over for a long time staff person that retired. Sure. So we're sure. having a bit of a changing of the guard. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I don't think it's that out of the ordinary to do what we're doing, to just step back and take a year or two and say, you know, our program is m maturing and, and working on managing the lands that we have and looking for the big opportunities to partner at the same time. 
makes a lot of sense. It's actually happening to lots of the programs in the area. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know the answer, but I don't think it's it's a weird thing. And this hasn't been super long. This hasn't been more than 10, 12 years that they've been doing this. The, lo the, the longest one ago that I could find in Dan's files was twenty fifteen. Yeah, I, it I might be longer than yeah. That, I think we talked about it before, then, but or unofficially. This, yeah. this process with the application may not date back further than that. But. I think the logic you brought up before about the lack of management plans for a lot of the open space properties where we might be asking the county for funds in order to do recreational trails and things there. Well, it makes sense for us to figure out what we want to put there that's the most appropriate for those lands before we ask the county for money to go pursue things. So that sounds like maybe that's what we put together. Maybe we want, we want them to participate with our management, or our management plan process. Well, that's that's that is. We have our heads together about right. like what's out there in terms of funding, grant opportunity. Is there a chance? Do you apply for a planning grant? Mm -hmm. So the that Goco planning mm -hmm. grant to support um, that? We, you? we could, we have, but we lack the people to do that at this point in time. So it'd be great if the county did that for us. Mm -hmm. We can support them. I think I mean, it, that's what I, they're for. Yeah, I mean, that's I think great. it's, yeah. Well, again, I appreciate that this was long, probably a little longer conversation, but touched on a lot of different pieces here, but I think it's a good piece for this group to understand. I mean, this is a piece that internally with staff, I think externally in the community, there's that piece of why are we buying more when we can't take care of what we have. There's also a piece of if we lose an opportunity, we never get it back. So there's always kind of that, that tension between how you are looking at your open space programs. That's what I was going to ask. Are we are we going to lose out on anything? Are we going to lose out on half a million dollars or whatever? Are, are we going to lose anything by skipping a year? I don't think so. No, we, we no, we're not. But we're you know, and in that time, we're not going to lose sight of any of these. We're going to keep an eye on prices. We're going to keep looking. We're going to keep you know negotiations talking to neighbors things like that so we, we we're always doing that we're always trying to maintain relationships and um, things like that so. the, other, the other piece out there is that um, when we do see those pieces boulder con has been creative with us in the past too where um right now closing on the adam dairy we're our piggy bank i was shaking it at the very end to get to closing make sure we could do that um, so we may not even have the funds to do this if we partnered. Boulder County has worked in the past, allow us to pay them back over time even too, so. I'm really supportive of the idea that you and Dan were kind of talking about, about, you know, communicating where we're at with Boulder County and letting them know that these areas are still of interest to us and where we are. And I mean, just something that's a placeholder that keeps those priorities fresh Great. in their minds. So maybe that. I'll send a summary for your approval um, after touching base with them and make sure we just get that into them by February 10th. And then I'll say, you know, approve it as of the date of this meeting. Yeah, I think our meeting's probably after that. So. Yeah. I, I guess you I just do something this evening to see if you're supporting us. I, I guess they get the good mm -hmm. one to sort of logically yeah. su support. Our meeting's the 13th. So, you know, I think, yeah, does anyone have I think you shared Dan's, which is probably a great place for us to take carry forward. Yeah. I mean, so I think just to reiterate, I think the concept we were talking about is for you, Danielle, just communicate in a memo or something, summarize where you feel like we are with the program, why you would you know, not be asking for something this year. I think it's important the message about having management plans for the places that we're prioritizing, but then reiterating that we're so you know, paying attention to these priorities that we discussed with them previously. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, we'll want to follow up if those priorities emerge. Is that yeah, the, you know, it's expect like a proposal in a year or two. You yeah. know, I mean, that, that way you at least have a placeholder that right. keeps our... So they know it's not that we couldn't think of anything, it was more that we're making a smart choice to use staff resources wisely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we want to move to new business A and B. Um, and I will. I mentioned this to Jeff, but I may need to leave it at eight. So Nick, you may get to. <laughs> you never know. You Not just perfect. never know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Paige. <Pedro. laughs> so Swellen is here. Swellen Dabney is here to talk about the 
proposed new fees for Union Reservoir. Um, after we get your direction, it's our goal to go to City Council on January 24th to get their approval based on, again, whatever you share with us tonight. Do we as a board then need to have a vote at the end that yes, we like it, no, we don't? Is the City Council going to expect something direct from good, us? Some okay. kind of direct. Just I wanted everybody to be thinking that yeah. way as we hear this. All right, um, the fees for Union Reservoir, they haven't been changed since 2018. So um, some time has passed since the last time we had a rate increase. And since then, the use and demand at Union Reservoir has increased um, quite a bit. It reaches capacity during the summer months um, on many weekends for parking. Um, and it's a one-in, one-out situation. Um, as we look at our, our information, most people enjoy union by coming in via the daily fees. So um, this is a, a low price for uh, environmentally sustainable modes of entry. People are walking in. We've got a trail system that's nearby now and actually goes right past it. Um, we've got bicycle traffic and we've got a lot of people who carpool in. Um, our rate changes for our admission fees um, it's the same for residents or non-residents. There's just a single pricing for people coming in. And we are proposing that there, there actually is no change for bicycle or walk-in, that it stays at $2 a person. The daily vehicle, um, so a car coming in, we'd like to propose it stays at $10 with no change on that. The changes that we are um, asking to make is to make that weekend vehicle um, and holidays between Memorial Day and Labor Day to have that go from $12 to $15. Hoping to shift some traffic perhaps into the weekday use um, and hopefully make that um, recoup some more fees during the weekends when um, we're asking people to wait before they enter in our facility. Um, we'd like to make no, no change to daily watercraft like paddle boards that would remain at $5. But we would increase trailer boats from eight dollars to ten dollars, um, and then the open water swims. Our contractor admins would go from eight dollars a person to ten dollars a person. So those are some very nominal changes that we'd like to make that would make um, help out our operations. The other increase that we'd like to um, make are, are basically the passes. Um, the pass holders account for a high volume of traffic. Many of our pass holders visit over 50 times a year. These are folks that come every day to fish, every day to use the dog park. Um, and so we would like to have them take a little bit more of contributing towards the, um, the, the Union Reservoir by doing pass pricing that's based on seven to 10 visits. You know, if you, if you come more than seven to 10 times, you know, you, you benefit by a pass. If you're not gonna come that many, just do the daily things. These changes are um, based, they're a little bit more, um, there's a bigger change, and these are split by resident or non-resident. So if you live in city limits, you have different pricing than folks who are coming from, from Randall County or something like that. Um, we would like to change the first car vehicle fees from $65 for a resident to become $100 per resident. And for the second um, car in a household, it would go from $45 to $70. Um, it'd be a 30% discount if you have two vehicles in your household. Mm -hmm. um, Non-resident fees would go from $150 to $185. Um, the second car would be a 30% discount on that. <coughs> we would be making a change to the senior or disabled pass rate. Um, first car would go from $35 a resident to $65. With that second car, going from $25 a resident to a proposed $45 in 2023. The non-resident fees would go, they, they also increase. Um, as far as the passes for the water sports, watercraft, like the paddle boards, um, would go from five or $20 a, a season to $35 uh, for residents. Um, traded boats would go from $50 to $70 for residents. Non-resident price would be slightly higher. And then the, the last change we'd like to make, we're gonna, we're, we'd like to move into a more organized boat storage where people pay for the price of the, the slot that they have. 
Um, prior to now, we've had one standard size, um, one price fits all, and we've had a resident rate of 375 for residents and 812 for non-residents. We'd like to get rid of the resident or non-resident pricing in the future. Um, every boat storage person has to buy a car pass and a trailer boat pass, which would capture that resident non-resident difference. And then boat storage would be based on the size. Um, so a standard size would go from 375 a year to $720 a year. And that would be for, for everybody if you wanted a 12 foot standard size. We have a, a premium site that'd be for 16 foot uh, for larger boats, which would be $900 a year. And then the micro site would be for folks that have a very small craft that doesn't have a trailer, just a common area. That would be a more affordable $300. Okay, questions? Yes, Dave? Um, so, two, two questions. So, so, one is have we done any calculations about how this would impact our 2023 revenue? overall like what would be the number how much we would increase and then the second question would be with that extra money what would we do with it um we've all got a maintenance funds um how would we actually what the opportunity we have with extra revenue we don't have a we haven't come up with a direct number but it would anticipate it to go up um and the revenues that we would receive um, that revenues go back to the general fund we, but we do have the opportunity, and now that uh, Recreation has two years of working with David and his staff and in uh, doing the gate and that sort of thing, we have been uh, over $250,000 ahead of uh, revenue each year. So when we go to the 24 budget process, it will be our proposal to help reinvest back into the reservoir, whether that's in amenities or being able to hire more staff. Right. And that, that extra revenue could help pay for those improvements or, or new staff. With that history, that historically is how we've done things in recreation that once we have generated enough revenue over um, what was budgeted, we've been allowed to try to re-established or to reinvest back into recreation and, and are going to propose the same type of thing at Union right mm -hmm. now. And I just like to kind of read it. That's one of the reasons when Parks and Natural Resources and Rangers ran that front gate and stuff, it was kind of, you know, using their skill set where it's best and then using a group like this that really understands how to drive revenue, how to use those dollars to recoup stuff, to really reinvest in that. Because ours was just really going right into the general fund. We never really saw that. I mean, just with Jeff's background and experience and his staff, um, being able to generate more dollars, our expectation would be to, to see some that go back into the reservoir. But again, that'd be a conversation we have to have with our finance group and council, too. How are we, we going to make this pill something that people are going to swallow? It's a pretty, pretty hefty raise um, on things. And so if we're saying, oh, it just goes into the general fund, like, I would want to know when I go in, like, oh, we need more lifeguards. And so general fund doesn't tell me. Like that, that doesn't satisfy my that doesn't satisfy my thing. I don't want my general fund that I'm paying extra to go to the police department or the youth center or the whatever. You know, if I'm a, a union reservoir, like hypothetical, maybe I do, maybe I don't. But I want it to go directly to making sure that we have lifeguards or whatever. This is, I mean, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty big chunk. And so just, it kind of seems like if we're just raising it and we don't have specifics and it's not going directly to it, we're just raising it. And, and that doesn't... Well, there, you remember there are two, two things we're trying to do. Right. Number one is try to drive more people from being there on the weekend to during the weekdays. Okay. The, the, the number of cars and people that are setting out on uh, County Road yeah. uh, 26 is... is just a nightmare for everybody. People will sit there in, in the car as, as long as an hour or more, mm -hmm. and to the point where we've had to call police and have 
have them intervene when people are cutting line and coming from the other direction. So we, we have to do something to help with that part. The other piece is not only is thing, are things going back into the general fund, but the cost of doing business, as everybody's aware of, two years ago we were paying $12 an hour for our staff. That's all, all over $16 an hour now. So before we can worry about putting any money in the general fund, we have to pay the cost of doing uh, business right now. The budget process does not allow us to say we're raising it to do X because the only people that can make that approve, approval is the city council. So we're trying to position ourselves in a way where it does allow us some uh, possible flexibility to do more at the reservoir. The, the other part of it is that as we compare the costs of going to other locations, mm -hmm. many of them have stopped going with, get as many people in, in the car as possible to they're, they're starting to look at charging uh, per person. And by charging 10 or $15, it's still a very good a bargain for people to come in as compared to paying, you know, uh, five bucks a, a person or, or whatever. And then the, the bigger costs for the, the passes is really trying to make it more equitable where the individuals that have the opportunity to go there often uh, need to be paying for more of their fair share. They're, they're really getting a rock bottom uh, deal right now, and that really isn't fair to the daily pass holders or some of the other users. So we're trying to balance that that out so that they're paying more more for their share of the use. Long answer, so yeah. No, I, I still don't think we're. That's a long answer. How how is this going to the public? Because I can see that I will be hearing people say, "Ah, Union Reservoir is too expensive now." Like and it, it is for some people. And also, segue so, on there. Do we have a way for people of low income to get into Union Reservoir sometimes? Yes, uh, okay. I think with a yeah. piece of recreation. Is, sorry, I'm not going for it. Recreation does have a scholarship program that were, we have not had in place for three years uh, because of COVID. And recreation was doing so poorly in the amount of revenue that we we're generating. We feel like things are starting to turn and that it's time to reinstate that uh, scholarship. So yes, they, they will be able to do that. Okay. So I just talk to you. Sorry, I just respond on, on Jeff real quick. Usually Jeff and I try to make sure our answers are in alignment here, but I'm hoping one of the things that as we see Jeff generating more revenue and he's asking to bring more dollars back to Union Reservoir, I would hope that goes in some sort of format of we're asking this because we want the restroom to be done, we're asking for this because we want more staff. So at least you should be, I mean, if we're at, making the ask, I'm hoping there's some sort of... Yes, we, that is a different way of saying yes, but yes, we, we do not. So hopefully be able to end it. The other piece I want to kind of go back to that that equity and sustainability that we're they're not raising the prices on the walk-in and bike-in. So if you're able to bike in or walk in, we're trying to encourage that. The people that you don't get in the car, you don't have to do that. And if you do, like Jeff said, probably again, the most four way is count a bunch of people in the car, reduce your carbon footprint, and get in there as cheap as possible. So those would be some things I would say kind of help offset that. The last piece was on the boat storage, it gets kind of high. People just recognize that's the cheapest price you can pay to store a boat. We have boats over there only going to water because it's just the cheapest spot you can park anything. So I think people in that situation, um, it, it just kind of brings it up to parity with kind of getting close to even just boat storage. Sam, and then Scott, and then Dan. Yeah, real quick. I think I might be back to similar, just that when it's presented to council and then eventually it's covered in the Times call to be clear about the why, not just that it's being raised, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. that order, just switching the order of how it's talked about is all, that's all it is. Um, I wanted to ask about the boat storage. Is that, I assume that sells out every year, is that right? Um, or does it? It, it is. Okay, so that makes sense, I think, to me, to look at a way to raise that, especially if other things are similarly priced, or more expensive elsewhere. I'm gonna ask if there's any cap on annual pass sales. 
or there's no cap on that? There's uh, not a cap on annual cash sales. Okay. Um, and there, there was a slight misprint. There's a misrepresentation in the, your handout for the annual daily vehicle. I gave you the attendance number, not the number of vehicles. So um, in 2020, 2021, we had 27,000 cars, uh, not 110,000 cars. <laughs> and uh, 20, we'll 22, we had. Uh, I would believe it. I've been there on weekends. Yes. <laughs> 20, 29,000 cars or so in 2022. So, Jeff, let me pull up a quick look at. So, there's Union Reservoir, um, kind of like 26 coming right here. And then this is the boat storage. Is that one you look Jeff, the boat storage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, it's, it's kind of spread out and all over the place. Uh, we are working with uh, David's staff to. Um, number one, identify the boats that have been there forever. Uh, they never, no longer get paid for, and how can we dispose of those abandoned boats? And then trying to be more efficient on um, if, if David has a boat, this is his spot, have it, have it outlined so that uh, his boat has a spot, but then we can maximize the number of other spaces that we can kind of uh, make available. Right now, it's kind of a hod hodgepodge of, of we'll put your boat wherever we can find a space for it, and uh, we feel like we can do a better job with that. Scott? Um, with increased pricing, um, I think my first concern is um, creating more pressure on Macintosh, is that um, people already turn around and they hear $10 um, on the union grants, which is ridiculous after they went to but um, that's you know, how it goes. I don't know if we, you know, either a signage out beforehand or whatever, or if there's some other, just the road's too narrow to do pass holders versus you know, not or whatever. But um, so at least the kind of communications plan of saying, hey, residents, get on your bike. This is an awesome way to get to the Union Reds, and you don't sit in, in the city in line. But the, it, yeah, it's a, it's a nightmare of cars every single weekend. And the people turning around and then running to Macintosh is kind of a crazy other piece. Uh, it's more of a comment. But um, <clears throat> the other one is um, I really don't like n not having non-resident rates. Um, I think standard, we should have non-resident rates. They don't pay for it. Um, we should have a preferential treatment of residents across the entire thing. Because especially that $10 entry, why, why don't we... We charge people who are out of town more. Um, Boulder, Boulder Res does it, everybody else does it. So I think it's only equitable if they're doing it to our residents, we're doing it to them. So I think it's a 2x difference in pricing, you know, helps make, you know, it go down a little bit easier. Uh, along those lines, I noticed that if you have a small boat, your non-resident storage fee goes down in your new and so that's like, whoa, wait a minute. I mean, that's that's not what, and then you didn't mention what last year's uh, daily fee was for non-residents, only that they're now going to be the same. Have they always been the same? I agree with Scott that, I mean, based on the usage at Macintosh and people coming from Boulder, and you also mentioned that we compared to Larimer County. What about Boulder Res? They're a per person. Entry. That might be mentioned in your when you present to city council. I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but otherwise, that would be my question on city council. That's the closest reservoir mm -hmm. and the one that's the most similar. You know, Carter Lake or Horse Tooth are huge, and we don't really compete in the same sense of park all around in a big reservoir that you can ski on and all that kind of thing. We don't compete with that. We're more of a Boulder Res type competition thing, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah, especially with only one access point to use it. You, know, you can't walk around very far. Right. You can only hold so many people. So it needs to be prioritized to maximize usage for that. Anyway, to, to finish my point, I agree. Oh, the parking. So I did notice that like, if you're a non-resident, your small boat parking fee goes <coughs> down from whatever. I forget what to say. Yeah, which sounds a little like, oh, that's cool if you're a non-resident, you know, I mean, and I don't know if we're encouraging that. You said it's been sold out, but there's no reason to that. How do we compare to the sailing club across the reservoir on the east side? 
For pricing? Yes, for storage. I, I don't know what they're Well, we is. should find that out because yeah. are we driving people toward them or away from them, you know, by these new fees? Uh, we, we should have, and maybe we should be thinking about what do we want? You know, do we want to be the same? We, they provide a launching service. I mean, maybe they should be able to charge a little more. So well, the larger boats can't go over there, though. No. Just right. sail yeah. rights. Correct. I understand that, okay. but you have a lot of sailboats in storage that have been there forever. Yeah. You know that you're. I, I don't. I'm just thinking we should know what that is uh, in order to have a comparison. The the micro site is actually born of um, a, a parent who contacted us. I think he was gifted with a two person paddleboard, or you know. Paddle, paddle, craft, paddle, paddle craft or whatever. You I, had paddle boat in here. It's either paddle board or pedal boat. Pedal <laughs> boat. And you need a place for it to be. And I said, well, you can do a boat storage. He goes, okay. So I'm like, okay. So the micro site is for those type of situations. Mm -hmm. For a new Something very small that you can't keep in an apartment. You can't keep at your site because of an HOA, but there might be an opportunity for, for this. So it's not intended to be for non-residents, I guess it's what. Well, then jack it up for non-residents. I mean, it would be my thought is if you're, if this is supposed to be local folks with little boats, then charge more for a non-resident. I mean, it helps the pill be swallowed better to Aaron's point that I think it looks a little nicer for Longmont folks if that's what, if that's who we're aiming for. And whether you can lower the Longmont price, I don't, that's you guys can figure out better numbers wise. But it seems silly to to make it more attractive for out of towners if we're busy. I think we have to find a, a good judicious writer for City Line on the speed increase. So, I mean, just I don't know where you guys are at in terms of I'm hearing some concerns from the board so i don't yep. know in terms of timing but you know i would also echo the concern about sort of the resident non-resident balance i do think that's important and i also think i mean i also i never used union but my first question was oh they must have done some analysis of why they need more funding and you know this is why so i do think that that why even if it is about you know changing use patterns and you know Increasing opportunities to local residents versus non-residents, or whatever the why is, I think that needs to be clear as part of this in order to um, make it more palatable for the community. And I don't, maybe for another time, I get tired. I don't totally understand that so the city doesn't have any kind of program where the revenues that you raise can be dedicated to that facility. Enterprise it just fund. automatically goes. Oh, you would have to be an enterprise. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> I just want to add a counterpoint to the discussion about having uh, higher fees for walk-ins for non-residents. My thinking here is that, okay, how do you actually check for that? Now you have to have the front guard person check? How would that work? You do it the same way you do it at, the, at Martin Street. Trash and recycle, right? You show your utility bill. Utility bill or an ID. So now you have a backlog of people that have to have their ID or utility bill at the front guard, and there has to be an additional check. Wouldn't that make the line longer and slower? You can just pay the non-resident. They'll have it. Just have to sign up before you get there. Counterpoint, Jeff. Just putting it out there. Because yeah. it might slow things down. It might actually have unintended consequences. Tom, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, just something pretty straightforward. A little bit less than honest than all these questions. Um, does, do, do these raises serve enough to put you guys in a strong position to start asking for more help from this general fund and all of that? Or does this turn into okay a, a more yearly situation where we need to continue to raise funds? Um, just seeing as we haven't done it since 2018. So it does position us better. Mm -hmm. Whether the timing of that this is the right one, I am a little concerned about, and David and I talked a, a little bit about that. Um, but at some point in time, we will have to raise fees because our costs of, of doing business mm -hmm. are going to change. So. Well, that's a good point. Do you yes. expect to do this again next year? Yes. No. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I like it, that is point. It just enough, is it enough to at least kind of hold off for yes. another uh, 
four four years, four or year patent or something like that. And or if if it wasn't for some reason, whether or not we needed to reevaluate after reviewing some more numbers to see what where those like those sweet spots were. Yeah. To put you guys in the best position to then give Union the best chance for this upgrade and, and make everything go as smooth as possible. Yeah. yeah. So just in terms of, do you want to revamp this at all and then bring it back to the board based on these questions, or what are you thinking? I think that would be a good idea. Thank you. Are there any other final comments before Steve and then come back to the I just wanted to remind the board of <coughs> There is future improvements to the union. This is somewhat of a temporary thing. We would like to in initiate the master plan improvements, which will change everything about what you're seeing here now. And uh, we're, we have to put about $16, $17 million in the union in order to do that. And so the fee structure will likely look a lot different after, good or bad, I'm not sure what that'll look like. We'll have to have a consultant help us with that. But um, the fee structure will likely look a lot different after we institute that project. So this is somewhat short of a short term that is one of the projects that's been mentioned in the cultural and uh yeah. library library, library, library recreation yeah. culture so what one other ask just if you bring it back to us i guess is to try to have an estimate about what such would raise like i can't tell from the numbers if it's fifty thousand dollars or five hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. we just use last year's usage numbers and give a rough calculation of what the increase amounts to that would help i think with magnitude okay. yeah that um so uh, Union Sailings number for some sun, sunfish, sailfish lasers are three twenty five. So that's more comparable to the existing price structure than the seven twenty price or something like that. Because it wouldn't meet the macro standard. So that's a big difference. So a lot of those smaller boats you you do just wheel out to the out there. Until the dock was built, a lot of the, those bigger boats, there's like three or four McGregor twenty sixes out there couldn't actually launch because it was just dry and you just you ran out of uh, launch space so those guys couldn't get into the water. So that's part of why some of those boats sit there is that without a, without a viable dock or the water um, being high enough, they couldn't actually get into the water. Um, and so the even, on our side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So late summer, it could still happen even this year that um, you just run out of space to get those boats in. Yeah. Oh, one last little detail. Location, does that factor into prime versus standard? It's a long, skinny, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, is it a 200 yard drag of your boat or a 20 yard drag? I mean, I think they're all driving. The, um, you can see how many people want to be down to here. Yeah, but this is this is kind of. The just curious area. if yeah. if that's something to think about, or or put the big spots in one end, or the little spots in one end. I mean, I, you know, mm -hmm. usage, or I don't know how you do that, but just looking at that, it's like I want to be over there. <laughs> I would pay to be over there, kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Um, potential open space. Yeah, I will take this one. This was a little bit out of sequence. Daniel talked about the fact that you know we typically come to this group to say, hey, we have a property we've talked about in the past, you've heard about it. Now we'd like to take it forward to council to see um, if they're going to support that. This is a property that, that came up, um, and I do have, I'm going to pull this up. It's very unique. We had um, closed down the Collins property down by. Um, by Sandstone Ranch and Collins and Peschel, I'll bring that up in a minute here, but the reason I'm pulled off is the fact that there's a half acre parcel that was identified actually by oil and gas company that wanted to lease that and they wanted the owner of that. The owner of that property is Union Reservoir Company. So Union Reservoir Company was approached to lease minerals on this little strip here. This is Sandstone Ranch. This is the Collins open space. This is the Sherwood open space. This is the Shell open space. And you see this is a significant open space um, compilation of properties. And there's a half acre in here that was actually owned by the Union Reservoir Company. So council gave us direction to go ahead and um, make an off on that to purchase it from the Union Reservoir Company. The Union Reservoir Company had no need for it anymore at one point back in the 1800s when they purchased this property. 
spring gulch comes down through here and there is a potential to do a diversion down there along with there was some flooding of some agricultural fields and they were trying to divert water off the farmer's field back in the late 1800s so Union Reservoir Company has had this they haven't paid taxes on it it's just kind of sat there so um, when they found out or we found out that it was sitting there we went ahead and um, made an offer to the Union Reservoir Company and they did accept that so um, it's a little bit out of sequence. I'm kind of just updating this group. There is an offer that um, we made, and Union Reservoir Company has accepted that. And we're going to go forward with using open space dollars to acquire that piece of property. Is that essentially an in building in an open space? Yes. What's the going rate for a half acre? Um, <laughs> we, exactly. We ended up paying, we paid, I think, um, we paid 35 for the Collins properties. We basically did that plus a little bit of inflator. So we did the half of 35. So we took it like to 18, I think, so we would find the offering on that half acre down there. I was just curious if they cut the city, of, since the city is Union Reservoir Company, right? So this is a piece that I will share with this group. <laughs> it is a piece that's, we own the majority of it, but that staff that sits there has a fiduciary responsibility to the company. And all the members on that board could go back to staff and say, why would you vote in favor of something that's not of the best interest of the company? So we're okay. sitting there, we actually have a legal obligation to vote in the best interest of the, the digital export company while it's still a private company, because that's exactly what it is. So that other farmer trying to get water down the ditch, if we're not getting dollars brought in to help him improve the ditch or improve the reservoir or improve the head gates, there, there could be a question of why city staff would not operate in the best interest of the digital. So we're always trying to buy yeah, it and yeah. okay. say, this fair is a enough. fair deal, and we, we think we can, <laughs> with a straight face as city staff, make an offer to the reservoir company that on the other side of the table say, yes, that's a fair fair offer that we think is comparable. And if you can look at Collins, it, it was 35. It's been a few years since we did that, up to buy $3,000. I think that we all felt comfortable on both sides of, I'm sure when we turned our hat, we thought we were doing the best interest of well, the other groups. Side of that from the city people like us would be, eh, it was good the way it was. So, I think a piece of this is the fact that it, it was, but I think as residents of the community, I think we've made it pretty clear to our council and council members that we do not want oil and gas operations involved in our city. Um, oh, I see. And so, the union could company. have had they could have oh, I see. those Gosh, too. Okay to the oil and gas companies. This is not allowed to put it back into council to tell that now, now council can direct their staff on how to manage that offer. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I, I didn't see that last As a, as a reservoir member, we're really having right. to operate in the, you know, the, our fiduciary capacity. Council really doesn't have the ability to direct that board how to do things, but as it's owned as open space, they have absolute right. ability right. to tell staff how they'd like to see that. Manage. Great. So do we own the minerals underneath it? Yes. So Sweet. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Any any questions or airspace above it? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, you know, that those those weird things are some conversations about drones, might be I used to you know heaven to hell yeah. kind of thing, and um, those all get changed a little bit. But yes. Yeah. I was gonna ask. Is this a, a fee ownership parcel? Or is this sort of like an easement of some kind? This is a this will be a fee ownership when we do it. So we will okay. be purchasing the minerals. There's no water associated with this, and we'll be purchasing the service. And is our it is currently subdivided from the larger columns open space? Yeah, we're gonna have to go back to Wealth County. It doesn't even show up if you go into the property map. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we have to go back and work with Wealth County. Yeah. Okay. We didn't do a whole lot of title work on this. We were anxious to because another piece of throw there a sense of urgency. Um, if the reservoir company has staff on that drug our feet and said, you know, we'd like to kind of wait to see what happens, they could force pool that. So we, we would not have had a, a, a say in that once it was forced forced pooled. So the big thing was to get this done, get it under city control, allow us some time to, to look at how we do that, work with Wall County to do that. But we didn't do title work because we're surrounded by ourselves. So if we had another property owner around us and they maybe could have claimed that those lines were off. We probably would have done a bit more work up front, but right now we probably want to go and work with Well County, do some title work to figure out really where that sits and how we can get that. But like you, as you can see, it's surrounded by Sandstorm Ranch, Collins property, Sherwood, so we're really surrounded by ourselves.
do you need action from the board? Um, you know, maybe, again, since we're already down that path, it might just be nice for the record to see if there's any, if there's support for this continued uh, acquisition of the property. Council, again, this board's going to ask what the role really is. Um, this is an advisor group, so council can still, you know, do what they intended to do on that, but it might be nice for this board to say if they would support the, the expenditure of open space dollars to purchase this half acre to... I support the expenditure of not that very much money to purchase that and protect it. Do you want to make a motion? I move <laughs> that you do what you did <laughs> and that we say, good. Uh, I don't know how that goes, but I move that we approve what the purchase of that parcel. Recommend that council, council. Oh. That that. Uh, we recommend that council, I move that we recommend that council approve the parcel in the Longfellow deed area. Okay. Do you have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Great. See any opposition? Thanks, Thank you. So can we go do Dan's CD and E now? He's excited. He's excited. Hey. Yeah. Or do you go back to B? I probably be real fast. I have no update. Do you know when you will have an update? We are supposed to have our next meeting within the next two weeks. So at the February meeting, I should be able to report back. Okay, um, so the remaining items are all sort of business about how we, when we meet, uh, where we meet. Do you want to propose a package that we can just approve of doing things the same way we've been doing them? That, that you can say just like that. That makes it very good. <laughs> <It's laughs> <what you're saying. laughs> one line. <laughs> Keep it the same. Yeah. So, I understand if no one else wants to do this, but Monday nights are not great for me. So I would love to move it, but it's worth it because I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would move it to Tuesday nights if I had my brothers. There's probably some sort yeah, of. Can't. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. I forgot. Yeah, you we would miss Tim and we Tuesday. would just. No, me. Those guys have an obligation on Tuesday. I, I can drop in yeah. and drop out. <laughs> they got to show up. No, but not. I mean, but we only meet one Tuesday and you don't meet all those Tuesdays. Every Thank Tuesday. Yeah. Every Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, unless it's Christmas or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, let's don't do Tuesdays. One, two, three. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I think it would be hard to change that. Been the same day for lunch. I know, yeah. I know, I understand, but since it was ago, actually, as as since we wasted ink on it, I thought I would waste my breath on it. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> but, so I would propose that we continue the same meeting day and time, which is Monday at 6 30, and that we continue to meet at this location, and that we continue to post the agendas where they are currently being posted. Does anyone have any concerns with that? No, I was going to second it. <laughs> well, then I'll say, I move that we continue the, the meeting day and time, meeting location and agenda. And Scott seconds. All those in, oh, all those in favor. I was Okay, we're well, good. Then so I can actually like, be honest like, and just All right, right, all right, all right. You're dissolving. Okay. Yeah. okay. We voted in favor. Anyone opposed? <laughs> Aaron's opposed. Thank you. The motion <laughs> passes. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So um, the remaining item under new business is the crab agenda calendar. So hopefully you've got a chance to. Look through that from the packet. Um, this is somewhat similar to topics and kind of the mix of topics we've had in the past. Continuing to keep the, if you recall, the sort of new rec center and 
therefore that potential ballot initiative that would create a new rec center has been a priority issue for us. And so that continues to be on here as a regular recurring item. Um, you'll also see the master planning, which is the um, Parks and Recreation Master Plan update process, which is impending. Uh, so that would um, obviously will be an important item for us as well. There's kind of the regular um, review of potential capital improvement projects, as well as um, hopefully planning a field trip. Maybe we'll revisit the idea of a retreat or work session this year. We didn't end up doing that last year, but I'm still interested in it. Um, yeah, so are there any other, any topics you would not like to see on here or anything you feel is missing? Yeah, Karen? I, I'm still just trying to figure out what, sometimes what we do. Um, and so I want to, there's a couple things that I'm interested in us looking at and I want to know if I can just put them on the agenda or if I need to put them on this and um, one of them. Um, and one of them is um, attracting and retaining BIPOC people to the board. And if we can schedule a discussion on that. And um, another one is how, how this community park, nature area, and neighborhood park, how that looks how it got there, and what we can do to change it, if we can do it. Right. So when I asked about, like, can we put a nature, you know, can we have a nature area there? Like, no, nope, that's a natural, that's got to be a natural area. Can we have a play area in this nature area? No, nope, that's got to be a neighborhood park. I am enthusiastic about us changing our definitions of our park, parks to reflect Boulder's definitions of the is that part of the master plan? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, is that the march? So, the master, only master plan that's active right now is the recreation master yeah. plan. Yeah. Okay. The master parks, trails, and open space master plan updated on board for several years. Um, I'd encourage you to read the existing park recreation and trails master plan in 2013, which is an update from one that was from 2003 or 4 um, that identifies the um, different park types that we have based our park system around. Um, I would also say, and we'd have to, uh, I, I guess we'd have to talk about this as staff, but I'm not sure. I don't think the board is the decision maker on what our park system looks like. I think you can provide advice to staff and advice to council. And council will be directed to make those changes. Is there a yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I'm aware that we don't have very much power, but we so yeah, can. I'd encourage you to advise that. Piece, I think it's and then I would just also say I gave her a presentation to a rotary at, at Dr. Waters' uh, request. Invitation. Voluntold? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was voluntold. I was voluntold by him. <laughs> <laughs> That's between you two, fellas. <laughs> Uh, just last week to Rotary, and we and it really talked about uh, our park system, and I'd be happy to share that with the board. That's an, that's an easy share <coughs> if you'd be program. interested. That sounds good. And it just talks about what our park, different park types are for. It also helped the Rotary and, and the public understand our open citizen system and what that's about. So David took that part of the presentation, and I can even give that presentation here if you want to do that. It wouldn't yeah. take that long if you want to do that, but however you'd like to, to do that, I'm happy to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, but just those are my initial thoughts on what you're saying. And then, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then how we can maybe stretch and expand those definitions because I look at how our board, sometimes I'll vote on things. I'm like, oh, I think this is probably a good idea. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And then that gets recommended to council, and council says, oh, they thought that was a good idea. Yeah, sure. But then maybe somebody with some thought or some expertise comes along six years later and says, you know what, maybe this could be better. I'd like to figure out how I can help this be better. Because I'm the person with expertise that's coming along six years later that thinks that we can do better than what we're doing, even though we're doing great, but we can do better. 
Right, well, I will just say, I mean, now is a good time to talk about agenda topics, but also if any members have agenda topics that come up throughout the year that you would like us to consider building into an agenda, you know, just let me or David and Jeff know, because we meet monthly in advance to kind of plan out the next agenda so and you the two future know agendas. Her point, yeah, they plan the agenda for each month, so if you have something, yep. let Paige know, and, you know, it comes, it shows up. But so are there any other, so I've noted errands, and I think we can work, we can work those in based on the other topics too, yeah. I assumed you talked to Jeff, Ben, whatever, but I'm surprised that recreation program in aquatics isn't till June. Isn't that a summer kind of thing? I would have thought we'd talk about that earlier. We put that on the agenda this year and we never and, talked and about it. it. We removed it, yeah. Oh, okay. It's more of an information, ah. it, it's not really, looking for any direction but okay a lot of the conversations you all have are more on the park side and i'm trying to uh, put a little bit more recreation into what you all cover okay so i understand that but if you were looking for guidance that's way late in the deal yeah you know, no. summertime is prime time yeah for that is not what we're on. okay i do think that we should talk about how to Integrate more sort of the specifics of recreation programming. So maybe we can. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't even occur to me until I saw that bullet. Yeah. No, like, oh, we don't the, talk it about it. It was that. on the list last time, <laughs> and we didn't. Yeah. And it, you know, I think it, it would complement well with depending on how things go with the tax initiative. So that means we all should be listening right. to folks who would like to make requests, and that would be a way to filter them in. Another thing I'd like to see us maybe have some time to concentrate on is how to get and solicit feedback from diverse audiences and send maybe a, a session on, you know, a brainstorming session on us with us on how we can get that because the suggestion box gets full of the same people. Do you have anyone? In the city that is about engagement with diverse communities? Yeah. Or is that Carmen? Or is that someone else? Well, Carmen is a part of that, but with the new structure of the uh, comms teams, that they can, the communication teams can help us with that as well. Which that ties into your other suggestion of how to get uh, a more diverse uh, group of people on the board. Just mm -hmm. kind of can't tie together the conversation. And then, oh, can we have like, can we get like, can we get like little business cards like, contact me like because I know if I if I'm functioning as I'm not part of the city I don't know but what I want to say is when I hear someone talk about this or you know they're using the trails that I use and I, I want to give them something that says. Here, this is where you go. You have a suggestion. You have an idea. You have you have input. You're you're valuable. That you're using this. I want to have an invitation to invite them in with direct, so that they can do it. You can throw it away, but you can also use it. I can give you David's. I was going to say. I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no, my business card is sitting right front. The, the city website does have you can direct them there. It's not perfect for yeah. everybody, but it does have a way to. Provide feedback which filters its way, its way down the staff. Yeah, so but that saying saying to a twelve year old who's using the skate park, look it up on the website and contact where you can find and give your feedback on the janky thing over here on the skate park. No, I want them. To, I want to be able to hand that to the twelve year old and say, contact me. Or My whatever. twelve year old's better at using it than I am. I was yeah. just in that. Example. But but you know. That's your child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I just would like to figure out, and so that would be in that conversation is how we can directly, because saying it's there isn't isn't an invitation to people who have been othered. And maybe we could create business cards that direct people, give give links, and that way they're walking away with something that I can't remember what Aaron said, but oh yeah, I have the card to, to say. I've actually thought about wearing a t-shirt while I'm running and saying that. I'm part of the parks board. Give me a feedback. Call Jeff. Yeah, and just wearing it. Yeah, one eight hundred call Jeff, but just wearing it like twice a month. How many shirts?
Thursday. Next. Uh, I wanted to clarify. So uh, for March, there is the potential board retreat. That is different than the field trip, right? Okay. And that is just a topic for us to talk about whether we, if you, those of you who've been on the board before might recall, I'm still interested in us doing some kind of like work session, you know, where we might be able to come together and have some of these conversations in like a less formal setting. Um, I, schedules are hard, I know, so that may not happen, but that particular thing would just be for us to talk about, do we want to do this? Do we want to plan something? Then would it be Makes sense. I just want, my, my call really is, in the past, when we've done the field trip, we've it's taken the place of this meeting, right? So if we do that, then one of these, either July, August, whenever we do it, would those agenda items have to get moved out of months. Yeah. And I will note that I do have on my calendar in a few months to ask about doing a field trip. For our <laughs> field trip. Because we discussed it at our last field trip. So oh. just putting it out there. That was down the mighty same brain, right? Yeah. 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 Even better than the ski trip. <laughs> Just better ask soon because the flows are really from mid May to late June. Okay, well, let me know. Off. I'm putting my interest out yep. there so let me yeah. know if, if that's something we should put in. There's some abandoned boats at Union Reservoir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I do actually have to leave early. So if we, we can gender, uh, we can um, end the meeting early, adjourn early, or I can hand it over to Nick if you want to continue. To finish the remaining items. Any other staff items? I have many more things to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do, do or I do? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so I'm happy to hand it over to Nick. Is there anything formal I need to do? Okay. Check the right. bylaws. Yeah. Your, All right. Your departure will be noted in the minutes. Yeah. Get <laughs> <laughs> on the camera. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Sleep. All right. So the next agenda item is really. Do you want to come up here? Yeah. I can do that. I'm not going to open up anyway. It's really just discussing items in the packet updates, right? right? It's the next agenda item. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be opening the floor to the group. Does anybody have any items? Scott? Um, yeah, a question that thinks I perceive. The, the, um, the city wayfinding is a little ominous. They've been sitting there for a while trying to get things back from the contractor and uh, say there would be an update in December. And uh, this is still the same thing. Yeah, um, we um, met with our consultant right before the holidays and uh, she turned over what she feels is the final package. Uh, we're still waiting for a couple of odds and ends um, from her cost estimates, things like that. Although I did get the cost estimates, but they're not for what I want. Um, what we're going to have to do with this is um, take what she has completed and either hire someone else or work in house to turn that into a true signed package that we can utilize. Um, separate from because this was if you have to if you understand this was citywide wayfinding citywide parks and trails and also LDDA had a lot of money in that and they designed all the signs for downtown to update all of their signs so there was a much larger scale project that we were a part of we what we got doesn't quite finish the works we need to flesh that out into something that our staff can be using and uh, other people who do projects within our trail system are using when that will happen First, second quarter. Okay. We're still, still working. As far as implementing any sort of project for wayfinding throughout the city and things, uh, we'll likely talk about that when we do CIP this year. Um, we had some money um, before that paid for this work, but um, we don't have a plan in place right now. There were some efforts to do a park inventory or park sign inventory, which we got some work done by some former college students as interns, and um, I don't think they finished. They had some scheduling issues, and we had some issues on our side as well, not, not by them at all. It's great that they were to help with this, and I think Jim Crick was looking at reaching out to them for the spring semester of 2023 to see if there's some students that would want to do that for us. So 
that's the first step is finding out what we have. And we have made several attempts at doing that, but it just hasn't worked out staffing wise over the past several years. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've had just a quick piece on that. As Steve mentioned, the whole plan is going to take a while to get that in place, but we've had a lot of signs kind of waiting in limbo um, while this was out there. So we're just going to take what we have and make it work at this point. So, so some of those signs are just faded to the point you can't read them. Um, where Steve has had a project waiting, or, or engineers who are just going to take what we have and start fabricating some of those sooner than later. Any other items in the packet? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the first is Daniel's here. I noticed you had a button rock update. Next month we get the real update. Mm -hmm. I've polled since our last meeting seven different folks who all own dogs and say they will be up in arms if you ban dogs from button rock. So you need to make a careful presentation. Otherwise, I'm sure, based on their vociferous reply to me, they'll be at city council meeting yelling at them when you per, you know before they pass that. So you better get all the data or whatever. They're all complaining about, aren't there cows over there? And I mean, there's a lot of, you know, if poop is the issue that we all have to scoop and stuff. So I'm just letting you know that we, we talked a month or two months ago and they're not, the folks I talk to are not happy about that idea. They're not happy about leash law on the sleepy, on the, Sleepy Lion Trail, but they do it. So that's going to come up, I think. And I think you told me, Congress, uh, that Don't several folks on this. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I, I held my tongue. <laughs> yeah, right, right now. <laughs> anyway, that's going to, yeah, that's going to come up. So just FYI. Should I keep going? Yeah. Okay. Um, I noticed there were two things in this packet that I didn't know what the heck they were Antelope Park and McLaughlin open space. I saw a McLaughlin open space when we went to it, but they're not on the city website. It's right there. So <laughs> it's when yeah. in the minutes, there are things referenced that there's no way for us to understand yeah. what they are. Maybe it was the same way. It's not unless open space property is. I mean, we have a nice web page, so these are things that need to be updated, there, I guess. So we've had a pretty huge reorganization within the city in the past six months, and we are still trying to figure out Things like who updates the website? How does that happen? <laughs> no, I they actually have hired a new this website. This is an FYI here, then. And they're they're looking looking about working on improving our website, right? Which I think is better than the last one. So I don't know what needs improved, but there are some concerns with with the website. Updating maps is a big thing. We revamped our entire GIS department in the past three four months and hired a new two new leaders of that GIS department. And so. You'll see some lulls and some improvements coming in 2023, I'm sorry. Well, and this is just our minutes. It's not like the public knows, but this is an FYI that once this is out there, you got to have that updated just so folks can find it. So we, Danielle, just had a meeting with our GIS folks on our process when we acquire a new property, what how it gets put into our mapping system. The map I just brought up is an amazing system, but I don't know that... That is public facing, isn't it? It's, that, it's designed to be public, public facing, facing, but it isn't. It's not, it's it's not, not complete it's not, right yeah. now, but that's part of what we want to be doing with it. So, so yeah, we, we see it. that. No, I mean, you, know, you have a list of parks yeah. and open space. I mean, it, it's tough. I understand. It's hard to, you know, companies well, can't get their own pages up. Steve actually, talked about the uh, presentation we just did for Roy Club. I had to go with a hand-drawn map. I could not <laughs> find a GIS map. It was over the holidays and things like that, yeah. So. Yeah, it worked. Okay, thanks. Oh, so, so where the, is it? I don't know. Antelope Park is up at Button Rock Preserve. It's just, it's actually just a. It's. Boulder County and us are working on a forestry project up at Antelope Park. Antelope Park is really on Boulder County Parks and open space. Oh, so is this like the Antelope Trailhead? Yeah, up in that comes area. off of yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Apple Valley Road, Road yeah. and you exactly. go up the easy yep. way to go up walk. Yep, and then that, that gets you up to you Hall Ranch. up to Hall Ranch, bordering up to Button Rock Preserve. The humans can actually ride up as opposed to superhumans who exactly. have to go up the front side. Okay. Yes. If any of you are mountain bikers, you'll understand that reference. <laughs> Um, okay, the next one is on um, Montgomery Farm. We're working on an extended lease to Montgomery Farm. That's under Ecosystem Management Open Space. 
Isn't that one of the possibility places for a future rec center? It is. So, so if we do a five-year update, is that a problem for a rec center? Should it pass? Should we decide to put it there? So there's a couple of pieces. Of that. I, I don't think one in a five-year it's going to. We have a lot of work to do on that piece of property. Does everyone know where that one's at? No. That's at 66. It's kind of going to fly out. Okay. Oh. No, Future Parks yeah. County Road in five and fifth. I don't know if Montgomery's on show. It, it, well, it is. It is. It's, that's right here. Oh, yeah, funny pattern. So this was actually county open space, and the city had a property called the Tice property somewhere up in this area. It was going to be a community park. The tenant that is farming this also farms up in that area. There's a lot of agriculture, oops, sorry, up in up in this area, and trying to keep agriculture up here and not have to have people go up to community crop park across 66. City and county decided to swap those properties. So this Montgomery property is now slated as keeping open space on the bottom portion of it. That was a requirement of the county when they swapped it. In this upper portion, I can't remember how many of this, 40 and 80 or what that, that split is, is is set aside to be a community park. Um, even if it would go into some bond issue or something, that five years probably is not going to keep him from harvesting corn in the next five years of pumpkins. The tenant that's up there is Dave Asbury, who owns Full Circle Farms. He's the largest organic farmer in the front range. Um, great person. He farms a lot of this area around here. He knows that's what it is, and he's willing to farm it until we. Oh, it's not point. a guarantee that we're going to make a right. park or but go to the rec center. Exactly. It just it was like, wait a minute, he's, I've he's, heard this name. Yep, so he's <laughs> willing to, if, if in three years we have to say you have to go, Dave recognizes that and he, okay. he will go. Gotcha. So you've thought about it as the bottom line. Yes. That's what I was getting. Or at least it's that language for now. For the city. Yeah, so we, ah, we have okay. lots of weasel. Can I ask one yeah. about that actual parcel before yeah. you go on? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a, a road on that parcel. I wonder if that was open for use? Is that's, it still a dirt road that goes across it? It's a utility easement and it goes out to a ditch gate out there. So it really is only accessible by city staff, utility companies, and the ditch company. It is unsigned and open for access, it's interesting. Okay. But, uh, um, maybe not. Yeah, we heard that Dry yeah, Creek was the one he basically specified yeah. right yeah so but uh, again this could be something that, that comes up but I, I mean i think steve and others probably think it's not the priority jeff as far as we looked at this but it, it could it could happen and dave asbury the tenant out there is aware of that okay great i prefer dry creek also but i just Montgomery farm has been on our minds in the conversation it's my recollection that fell off the list that's okay. what there's kind of okay. like was a consideration yeah for something in this gotcha. upcoming potential bond. Okay, great. Well, then that solves that problem. I, think I just hope I wasn't sure about that. If all of a sudden Dry Creek just didn't work because of hydrology or something else, this could be the spot. So we kind of have it there as a little, again, that placeholder that we aren't going to forget about it. Um, but we've definitely had that conversation with Dave Asbury. And one last one was how did the rec center open house go on Saturday? It went what? really well. Over 300 people showed up very uh, positive feedback and um, we're hoping that we'll see more of those folks come back again. So, so you think these are all potential new visitors? Uh, I, I wouldn't say all of them, uh -huh. but I would say a good per percentage of them. And, you know, we hadn't done an open house in years and uh, to see the excitement and the number of people was really good. So we'll probably do it uh, at least once a year moving forward. How about about six months from now, when we're trying to sell this new bond issue, this would be a time to get info out. You know, we discussed how do we approach folks, and this is another way to, you know, anyway, free or yeah. low cost. As long as, at some point in time, we can't say you got to vote for something. No, but the, the bunch of us can show yes. up there and do that, and yeah. it's an easy, easy hit, yeah. I guess. Okay. All right, great. Any other items from the packet? Bring it. Yeah. I, I, well, there was a note about the the St. Green Greenway Phase Thirteen being sixty percent done with design drawings. Anyone? It was. Yep. 
Okay. We're, 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 hoping, 60%. Yeah, we're not at 60%. Okay. We're working towards 60%. Okay. We're hoping to um, get that to our grant sponsor, CDOT, by, by the March. Okay. I was wondering when we might see anything around that on this. If it's been covered previous months, that wasn't here. Once we meet but... with CDOT and have those conversations and that's approved, that's when we can share, share it more. Okay. In, in, do you mind, Danielle? Do you want to start? I was just to say, just, just to be, just so you know, once a master plan is, is accepted by the board and we take it to the city council, that's the last interaction we have with the board and that project. The master plan for the Central Green was approved by the board decades ago, and so it wasn't, it wasn't something that we brought yeah. back to the board. You didn't miss anything. Yeah, yeah put it that way. Got it. There, Jane Ellis had some challenges, and so she probably wants to do an update at some point as far as the challenges you've encountered and how you're trying to solve those challenges. But um, but as far as I just wanted to let you know, as yeah, far as bringing, bringing plans back, because I assume the master plan was they said we should have something here, and now it's had a route and everything. Quite a lot more detailed now in design, and so we would just be seeing that when it gets released on the website or something. If you don't, if you don't bring it back here, when does that go to the public? I guess that's question. And it's done. It's supposed to get the public process went along with it. But again, these will get unneeded. Certainly. Yeah. So, some of these bigger, because there's been yeah. such a gap in time, I'd be happy to that's come not, that's back That's not what I guess. Like, a lot of the new residents and myself are very interested in things that were planned maybe 15 years ago, whatever that was, and there's no information about what that looks like or what it's planned unless you can go find a master plan to read about that. So, mm -hmm. There are a lot of master plans on our website. I'm not sure what is all there. But or, yeah, I found the right one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Cool. All right. Any last call on packet updates? Yeah. Um, so removal. Yay! I'm seeing the horticulture maintenance um, and the park and forestry thing. And I just want to say I really liked it on Saturday when there wasn't snow removal between uh, Kanemoto Park and Sandstone Ranch that enabled people to recreate on the snow on the trail. Proud to you that worked well. It worked well. <laughs> great, great. Like I like fume. I like try to get out there for a run before that because it just becomes slick for a while. And then also because I like to see the snow. I like the snow and that's why I'm out. And there's no actual there's no dirt trails accessible from, you know, inner city, right? So that way, that snowy trail is really kind of nice. Otherwise, I'd have to drive to it for snow. You should so. think about the Lolo Trail. It turns into soft surface at, at over, and it's soft surface. Yeah, I have to drive there. to get there because I have to. I would have to drive to do that part to get to Lobo Trail to start my run. And That's I just like running from my house, and I like I enjoyed the no the not cloud. And they could wait to plow it just a little bit later until after I get out. Because <laughs> so, I'm the only, I know, because I track everybody who's out there, there's nobody riding their bike from Sandstone Ranch into work on snowy days. I know that. There was one guy last year. So I really like it when it's later. Thank you. You can tell them to do whatever they want first. <laughs> so our, our policy, just so everyone knows, that's probably one of the things that it really is. Um, our record, we're... we're Snow, our school roads are the primary thing. That's, That's it. what I so wanted to do. So downtown, yeah. the, the downtown LBDA, make sure those shops and stores are, have access to the, to the public. Make sure that's clear and accessible. Then it's going to be our school routes, and then it's going to be our commuter routes after that. And then trying to get to more of those other areas that we, we try to get to. And when you have constant snow going, sometimes you never even get to those other areas. But that was, that's kind of our priority. And that's why I'm saying it. Like it yeah. is because um, sometimes I notice that the, the school area isn't done but the route to sandstone ranch is done and they might do and the route is all the way done and then you're like okay well the school needed to do first and then i do notice the park behind um behind sunset middle school lou is that lou miller affalter affalter that one like there like that drainage in that road is bad and there are four there are four schools that kids come that back way through through Holly. There's there are hundreds of kids that don't walk the safe route to school because it's not it's not the way you would go if you were a kid. Um, and it's really like those sidewalks could be plowed way wide because none of those kids have snow boots. 
None of them will because they're middle schoolers and middle schoolers don't have snow boots because their feet are growing too fast for even the best of parents to snow boot. Well, I'll tell you, my the staff that goes out and visits the trails, they're always trying to beat you out there because it, it makes it so much harder for them to clear snow right. once it gets tracked down and it gets. Right, I do. So they oh, it's easy. Yeah, when they, they, they're boys, I know. they just made a request to come in and start you know, even earlier so they can get out there ahead of that because it gets turned to ice oh. and then we get complaints. Oh, I, I know because I'm the same way. Yeah. I want to, I want to, <laughs> I like get up at four to shovel my walk before yeah. the first dog walk is done. Well, thank you for letting me know. Yeah. I would just say it's been great to have the Greenway be so well plowed this, this year especially because sidewalks throughout the city are so bad for now going on a month from us right. that having the Greenway be totally open has been amazing. Yeah. It's funny because I just got two complaints today from the Greenway, St. Bird Greenway not being plowed well enough. They should walk on any shady street in the world. Oh, from my <laughs> wife. Yeah. Yeah. She went on a run today and she had some complaints I had to yeah. pass on. No, All right. I think we're up to the last four minutes. We have to extend potentially the last two items. Just, just go fast. Just go fast. Okay. Yes. Um, items from staff. I, I don't have anything. All right. Uh, item. Sure. I, I'm, I can hold off too. So. Good. No, yeah. We can, we can I was going to say that the things out there, like the throughout this group, you can think about that maybe for next meeting is. Um, be it the field trips, I feel like you know open space does dominate because it's kind of those coolest properties. But I think now with um, a little bit more information on the Clover Basin, there's opportunity to maybe have uh, a meeting or a luncheon or something to meet up there or just kick something off. And also the Adam Dairy has some really cool spots on it down along the creek. So there's I just want to make sure I put an offer out there to this group that somehow we incorporate some of these new spots we have out there for maybe a field trip. Field trip. Yeah. Uh, I never knew the Clover Basin was. Actively owned by the city, 99.9%. I thought it was some private corporation that or club that owned it. Still it still is a yeah. private is until right. we but until we get that last one percent gone. We still have that. And it's, it's, there's other strategies around right. that too. But yes, I actually did have one thing to add. Just for the two new members, just so you know, I, I have been here for 25 years. Here next week, um, uh, well, awesome. and um, <laughs> I'm happy. I, you guys have only been, been here for two, three, four years, and so. If you have any questions, you want to get a coffee or whatever and sit down and talk, get a beer even, I'm happy to do that. Until right. you, so you answer any questions you question have. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't drink coffee, but <laughs> <laughs> I do drink beer. All right. Cheers. Okay. Items from the board. Any items from the board? Yeah. I have one. At Pratt Park, there's a porta potty, which is new to me. I've never seen one there before. Is that a park thing? Is that a construction thing? There is a porta potty that wasn't there a month ago, and it's set up. I know there's one. For pickleball? No. No, there's the courts. There's four courts there, but they're all covered yeah. with snow. Yeah. I'm just curious. Is there? Tim, Timber makes assessments and decides where to put porta potties for the winter because the restrooms shut down every year. Okay. They may have gotten complaints nice. last year. Oh, and great. Or, or yeah. it could be because the pickleball courts are now there. He chose to put one in pickleball. No, there's no right. pickleball there. It's yeah. just tennis. Yeah. Oh, so it's four turns. Yeah, so right. he has a system in his mind. He's not here tonight. Okay, great. That's, that's fine with me. Yeah, there there is one at uh, Willow Farm. Willow Farm. That's yeah. the one at Willow Farm because of the, the pickleball. Gotcha. And it's the, the it's LTA it's has good. is funding to keep the one at Quail. Yeah. Right. They used to quit after October or November, but now the LTA board said, now we're just going to do the whole time or something. So I was just curious. Thank you. That's it. Any other items? I have one. Uh, at Union Reservoir, there's a section of fence at 50 to 20 feet that is down. I uh, didn't know if there's a request in for that already. I just wanted to give you an update on it. Um, it is, it's along East uh, Kendallin Road 26, mm -hmm. and the fence further down near the dog swim park. Yeah, oh, this is the section of yeah. fence that gets wiped out every. Does it get wiped out so? every year? It's yeah. a yeah. hard. Yeah. It's coming around that corner and they wipe right into it. Yeah, happens all the time. <laughs> I'm betting on renders now, but yeah, okay. I'll double check. Okay, great. I didn't. I drove by this morning. Didn't notice it, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a pretty, it's a pretty big hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but it happens often. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any any other last items from the board? Okay. We ready to adjourn? Is anyone? I move we adjourn. All right. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. Vote.
favor? Yeah? Okay. Great. 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 Well, is there a